Spectrum Survival on Survival Talk Radio. Join us for Dad Talk, political debates, and pro-gun conversation. Hi, you're listening to Survival Talk Radio with me, your host, Dan Shrigley. Come and learn survival. Are you a fan of survival? Do you like all things survival? Full spectrum survival, urban survival, wilderness survival, how to escape and evade, lost or stranded, doomsday prepper, all things survival, you can find on www.danielshrigley.com. Come visit my official survival website at www.danielshrigley.com and learn how to sustain, survive, and escape and achieve rescue or self-rescue. California servicing the Northern California Bay Area. For all your security needs, please call Metro Security Services out of Pleasanton, California. Tell them Dan Shrigley sent you. This is your host, Dan Trigley. Uh, we are going to have a discussion today about Russia, Ukraine, and the United States and Western nations and NATO. Uh, I will be doing an episode for the Full Spectrum Survival Series that I launched a week and a half ago. I missed this last past week because I was... Uh, really busy with working and I never got a chance to, uh, to do the episode for the full spectrum. So that will come this Thursday. So I basically owe you guys an episode, but due to current events, I would like to have a show discussion about what's going on with current events in the world and politics, uh, about, uh, Ukraine and Russia and the tension there. So, as you've all probably been watching the news, uh, you know, Russia has been uh, building up its forces along the Ukrainian border. We have sent over 200,000 pounds of small arms, arms ammunition over to Ukraine. We've also ordered the evacuation of our embassy and the family members or dependents of the employees at the embassy to get on commercial flights and fly out of Ukraine back to the United States as per the State Department. Uh, Joe Biden, in a press uh, conference, mentioned Russia and possible nuclear war. So, basically, we are in a very bad position Um we are obligated to Ukraine because they are a NATO ally. And, um, you know, so we've made commitments and that, you know, hopefully, you know, we don't have to, but it looks like we're going to. It looks kind of um, like it's something imminent that's going to happen. So it looks like Russia is going to 
cross the border and go in and um and it's even mentioned that Russia might have implants in Ukraine already to stage a false red flag event. And um, and Ukraine's been also training. And it's, it's just a horrible situation overall. And we really won't know what's going to happen until it does happen. Um, we do know that there's talk about Joe Biden sending troops over to Ukraine um, and Russia might just ignore those troops, you know, so there's a lot of back and forth with uh, what Joe Biden's going to do as far as people's opinions in the left and the right wing media. Um, but when it comes down to it, you know, what's going to happen is we're going to end up sending our young sons and daughters, grandsons and granddaughters nephews and nieces you know off to war potentially um and they're going to be in a hostile conflict area with a very formidable enemy and um you know and ukraine is going to be uh leaning heavy on our support and hopefully we can get in our allied nations to join in and and create uh, you know a strong resistance um but the bad thing is that Russia does have nuclear bombs and we have nuclear bombs. And so does many of our allied uh, counterparts have nuclear bombs. Uh, and so, you know, we have to really be cautious here because we don't want a nuclear war. We don't want a chemical biological war either uh, or a radiological war, um, you know, uh, I would hope that Putin realizes that just threatening of nuclear war, um, launching a missile is going to be the destruction of not only our country or large territories of our own country, but potentially the annihilation of his country and retaliation, um, you know, and we do reserve the right for first strike. Um, if we feel so threatened, uh, we can initiate first strike. Um, I really hope it doesn't come to that. I personally do not trust the people in power right now. I don't. But you have to think of it this way. Will Biden break his promises to our allies? Because he has already kind of made us look very weak. He made us look very weak uh, with his foreign policy. He also made us look weak with the way and style for which he withdrew from Afghanistan. And there's people in Afghanistan currently right now completely suffering, completely scared. Uh, and basically they are being ruled by a terrorist organization. It's not a government. It's not, a, you know, it, they went from good to really bad. Um, because the established government that was put in place in Afghanistan crumbled and collapsed. And um, now they're being ruled by uh, Sharia law and the Taliban is in charge. And there's factions of Al-Qaeda over there and probably ISIS. So, I mean, and God knows what other extremist organizations are there. So it's it's not a good thing uh, where how the world perceives us now. Um, am I worried about uh, conflict with Russia? I'm not worried on the aspect of our military technology with our tanks, drones, missiles, as far as non-nuclear um, and our navy. And um, our abilities, capabilities, our technology for our, um, you know, body armor, war fighters on the ground. Um, what really bothers me is what does uh, Putin have in mind? What is his military uh, commanders and strategists, advisors telling him as a strategy that would defeat us and um, and caused the, the most impact to weaken us um and it's it's 
kind of that unknown part right now that is very disheartening and extremely concerning. Um, you know, uh, it's the fact that Russia has nukes. And if they start losing, um, they might feel the need to flex more muscle. You know, like kind of like with the United States in Japan. Um, you know, we got attacked in Pearl Harbor. Next thing you know, we we're dropping bombs on uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Um, and, uh, you know, and that caused the surrender of uh, Japan. And, um, you know, so we don't want to relive history where we're wiping out 80,000 lives at once. You know, um, so, you know, the only thing I can say is plan for the worst case scenario. Plan that we might send our loved ones over there that are in uniform to go and fight for our ally and defend freedom and their freedom. Um, and, um, you know, this could be a test of the resolve of Joe Biden and the United States. The only problem here really is, is the people that are currently in power don't seem to have a backbone. Um, and they might feel non-inclined to hold up to their obligations because it politically doesn't fit the narrative right now. Um, you know, do we want to go into a war with the situation is to how it is now with the covid uh, the pandemic, the lockdowns, you know, it seems that this is just dragging on and on and on with no end in sight. Uh, plans are being made for uh, uh, Joe Biden for $137 million to help fund the building of a facility, not even on our country's land, but in a different country so they can produce, uh, you know, what's needed as far as like uh, testing kits and all that stuff. Um, and uh, that won't be completed until 2024. Um, you know, it's, it's like, so we're just going to drag this COVID-19 thing out. Um, and why are we doing that? You know, we were supposed to flatten the curve in the first two weeks. The curve never got flattened. Um, and every time we think we're flattening the curve, a new variant so conveniently pops up. We're told if we get vaccinated, uh, you know, we'll save our own life. But then when we get vaccinated, then we find out that we can still contract the virus. We can still we still need to wear a mask. Um, you know, we can still spread the virus even though we're vaccinated. Um, that the vaccination is only good to help you from dying so you don't get as sick. Um and it seems like, okay, so then if we all are going to get this virus, whatever variant, then why are we getting vaccinated? You know, why are we wearing masks? It just seems like we're being told one thing, then a few months goes down the road, and then we're being told something new, something else, you know. And, um, you know, so it's like uh, the public trust is collapsing. And so is Joe Biden's approval ratings and Kamala Harris's approval ratings. They're dropping. They're not climbing. They're dropping. Um, and uh, gas prices are going up. Inflation is going up. And when asked about inflation, even though it's going up, Joe Biden snaps at a reporter and calls him a stupid son of a bitch. Um, and didn't even say SOB. He said stupid son of a bitch. And, you know, so that's that's horrific. That's unprofessional and non-presidential and um, just goes to show his true character as a president. You know, he he can't even handle a honest, truthful question. You know, and I have, you know, no personal hatred toward the guy. I don't have any favoritism toward him either. So. You know, I'm just like, I'm like many of you, um, you know, I only know what I see and I don't really believe what I hear. I only believe what I see kind of thing. And what I see is not good. 
I, I don't see anything that makes me feel like, um, you know, the future is going to be bright next month. It's going to get better next month. The economy is going to get better. You know, it's 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 not, you know, um, if you're looking for a place to live in California and you make fifty five thousand dollars, that's low income. If you make seventy five thousand dollars, that's barely climbing out of low income. You, you know, so if you have a car, a car payment or two, you have to pay car insurance. You have to buy groceries. You have to pay utilities. You, it's hard to find a place around here that's not just a, a studio, one room, um, or sharing an apartment with someone. If you know, you can have, uh, uh, you know, two incomes, two full time people working, like a husband and a wife. With full-time jobs but if they're only making 20 bucks an hour each you you barely make enough to have an apartment you know of your own and if you have a kid you know you definitely want a bedroom for your kid plus one for yourself you barely make enough money to pay for that place to live in california especially in northern california and southern california Maybe in the more rural areas you can find that or in the high crime areas you might be able to find that. But who wants to live in a high crime area? You know, so uh, it, it, it's it's like a bad place to live if unless you are, um, you know, making over six figures a year. And, you know, it's it's bad for couples that even together they don't make six figures. They barely make 80,000 combined or they make 90,000 combined a lot of couples because I, I talk to people all the time and you know uh, you have a couple that together they're pulling in paychecks each week that are like 675 700 you know if they're lucky they'll get a thousand but they're working 12 hour shifts uh, every day that they work and and some of them are having to work on their days off so they work six days a week sometimes seven days a week just to make ends meet because they have two you know if you're married and you have kids you, you know you really need two cars so you're making two car payments you know you you probably have uh you know um a storage locker that you pay for um you know it's just uh it just seems like you know it's pushing people out of the state because they can't support themselves. So the economy is bad. And then when you ask and the inflation is high, prices are rising sky high on things that, uh, you know, just gas, you know, as soon as Joe Biden got elected and swore his oath into office on his inauguration day, gas prices started going up around the country. And they've kind of leveled off right now at about $5 a gallon in the Bay Area. But, you know, I don't know what they are all over the country. Uh, hopefully, you know, California is usually pretty high. Um, but across the country, hopefully you're not paying $5 a gallon. But there might be places that are paying a little bit more a gallon for gas than that. Like maybe five fifteen, five thirty five. dollars you know. But, I, I, you know, this is just a year into his um presidency you know so maybe a year from now gas prices are going to go up a little more and next thing you know we're at 612 a gallon you know and that's inflation you know and when gas prices go up for us it goes up for the semi truck drivers too and they have to pay more uh, more money for fuel to transport goods and it also goes up for the farmers cuz they have to put fuel in their tractors and in their, um, you know, their equipment to farm and agricultural, uh, you know, uh, to do the things they need to do to put, uh, you know, fruits and vegetables and stuff into the grocery stores for you to buy or for manufacturers to package for you and prepare or make foods or whatever. But, you know, so when Joe Biden's asked a question by Fox News, um, I think his name was Peter Dorsey, um, you know, he asked him about inflation and Joe Biden comes back very defensively and calls him after the guy left the room, 
he looks over at him as he's walking out and calls him a stupid son of a bitch. All right. Why is he a stupid son of a bitch when all he did was ask you a very basic question about the economy? You know, why is that? Why does that make him a stupid son of a bitch? Because it is a question that is true. That he doesn't like because it calls him out. But he's failing there. He's failing when it comes to inflation. So, you know, and he's also failing uh, in foreign policy. And it's just, it's horrific. So my suggestion to you really is please start preparing. Please not only start preparing with an inventory, but start preparing and learning critical skills there's any skill that you want to learn you can learn from the internet any skill for anything for any job all right you can go on and learn how to do gardening but i tell you if you're going to garden for survival look into hidden gardens hiding your garden because the average person will walk right over celery the average person will walk right over potatoes the average person will walk right over carrots they'll walk right over if it's planted in a hidden way because most people don't know plant identification the average person doesn't and so you can hide your garden in plain sight but just hide it instead of putting it ducks in a row like a traditional garden you hide it because if you put it traditionally ducks in a row, greenhouse, whatever, that's the first place that people that are selfish, that are criminal are going to go because they see an opportunity that they could either secretly take it or they'll just take it by sheer force, like strong arm robbery, or maybe they'll be armed robbery, but they're going to come in and take what they want because they know it's there and it's free to them if they take it. And if they come with a force large enough, they can overpower you. They can, if they come with a force large enough, they can overpower your armed security company. They can overpower the police department. You know, even if you have 30 people, but they come in with 300 people, you know, how's 30 people going to uh, thwart off 300 people that are armed as well? You know, because it's going to become a lawless place. So... It, you know, that is the worst case scenario. That is Totawaki, the end of the world as we know it, or shit hits the fan, all right? But in and, and that scenario may not happen. We may not go to war, but we need to really start looking at what goes on around us in our everyday world and in our everyday communities that we see. We either see it directly in front of our face or we see it on television, all right. There's kidnappings. There's sex trafficking. There's so much crap going on, you know. So we need to really start thinking defensively. We need to think offensively as well. And um, you know, if you don't know self-defense, you might want to learn how to defend yourself. Go take some martial arts class. Go take some boxing class. But learn how to defend yourself. How to block. Also, um, you know, learn how to defend yourself with uh, pepper spray, a taser, you know, um, uh, whatever you're legally allowed to carry. If you're allowed to carry a baton in your state, then carry a baton and a pepper spray and a taser. You know, make sure that you're carrying what you're carrying legally, though. And you have to check with your state attorney general's office. You can always get onto their website and look it up, or you can look up the penal code in your state uh, for that to make sure you're not in violation of the law. Um, you know, if you, it's not illegal for you to own a baton, it's not illegal for you to own a gun unless you're a felon. Um, it's not illegal for you to own a taser. You know, if you keep it in your home and you're not running around the streets with it, obviously, you're. If you are running around the streets with it, showing off, obviously, you're going to attract that attention from law enforcement, and you know, uh, they're probably going to have every right to at least ask you, "Hey, what do you got that for? You know, what are you using for?" You know, you're kind of showing it off. And in some ways, brandishing is showing it off. And it's brandishing is when you're kind of uh, advertising you got it, almost like you're asking for uh, a problem or you're kind of uh, provoking. Um, 
and um, you know, uh, brandishing can be also considered a threat. Like you're posing a threat. You know, you're making people around you very uncomfortable. I know that the law covers in certain states where as long as you're going camping, hunting, or fishing, you can bring a firearm with you out in public, exposed, uh, because you might have to shoot a crocodile, you might have to shoot a bear or something, um, or, you know, um, maybe uh, to throw off, if you live in the, uh, you know, off in Florida somewhere, you know, they do have pirating, you know, but I don't see pirates happen too often. Uh, mostly hear about the Somali pirates where they uh, jump on board for uh, commercial ships and, uh, you know, try to pirate the commercial ships by force. And the uh, ships have to defend themselves with force and fire bullets across the bow and let them know, hey, we're, we're, we will open fire on you. You're not coming on board the ship, but, you know, but that really does happen and it's not uncommon. Um, but now we live in a world where everybody needs to be a survivalist. Everybody needs to be a prepper. So you should know how to start fires. You should know how to survive a nuclear attack. And I wanted to talk about like ideas about surviving a nuclear attack. Okay. So, you know, in the army, the manual says, if we've come under fire for a nuclear attack, get into your foxhole, sit in this position, get down low, you know, and your foxhole, uh, the blast will blow over the top of your foxhole, but you're protected by the earth because you're down below. Yeah, that might protect you from the blast. It might not protect you from the, the radiation, though. Um, you know, so knowing about radiation and fallout, you know, so you need to do some research on your own. All right. Um, you know, um, you know, if if you're in Los Angeles and a nuclear bomb does hit L.A. or if you're in New York and a nuclear bomb hits New York and you're 20 miles outside of the impact zone, you have a certain amount of time that you can seek safety to escape fallout and. You know, fallout is going to follow the jet stream, the the wind current. It's going to flow with that current. Um, so the best thing to do is kind of have your backup plans. You know, if you have a nuclear bomb shelter nearby, you might want to know exactly where that is and head to it. Even a tornado shelter is better than no shelter for a, a nuclear bomb. I remember as a child having air, air raid drills. And in the air raid drills, we would get under our desk. and then. But it was the same drill for air raids as it was for earthquakes. We would just get under our desk. That little desk is not going to stop anything. It's not going to stop anything from really uh, um, hurting you crushing you or blowing you across the you know the room uh it was basically a false sense of security essentially um you know but it's some protection and hopefully you're lucky and it provides enough protection to keep you from having something fall on your head or you know or whatever but um but you know being under your school desk is going to stop a nuclear bomb from blowing you you know to smithereens so what will stop a nuclear bomb from blowing you th to smithereens? Um, well, if you live in mountainous terrain, getting to the center and the bottom of a valley and using the mountains as a shield, because if you if you're in um, sac if you're in the mountains by Lake Tahoe, but a nuclear bomb hits Sacramento then the really only thing you have to worry about because you have so many mountains is getting low into the valley with the mountains above you because they're going to deflect the blast up. You know, it's not like the blast is going to follow the cur curvature of the earth. It's going to deflect up the first ob big object it hits. So the first big mountain that blast hits is going to deflect up and it's going to keep going up. But what you need to worry about is the radiation fallout. The other thing is, is if you don't live 
in a place where you can use terrain to protect you by getting to the bottom of the valley. Um, then, um, and, and when I say getting to the bottom of the valley, it's kind of like, like a dust bowl um, or a bowl, um, but into the pocket of the terrain and letting that terrain be the deflection for you for the nuclear blast. But we don't know how many nuclear bombs are going to be launched. And if you're in a uh, metropolitan area, you know, what is available to you to seek shelter in to help improve your chances to survive? Um, you know, in every car, every car should have a crowbar. And having the knowledge to know finding, uh, you know, finding a a sewer manhole cover that weighs a, a couple hundred pounds that you can pop up. Maybe it takes two adults to pop it up. Maybe it takes two crowbars. All right. But you pop up the manhole cover and climb down the ladder and and then you go down into the sewer, cover the man, cover the manhole cover the best you can if you can't all the way, but move it all the way over. All right. And then go down into the sewer, go down into the, the concrete uh, reinforced with earth tube, you know, the drain, the sewer system and put as much earth between you and that potential blast is one way, all right? Uh, the preferred way would be going to a nuclear fallout shelter, obviously. Uh, the other one is if you live in an area that has abandoned train tunnels, maybe not an active train tunnel, <laughs> you might get ran over by a train, but abandoned train tunnels or abandoned subways, um, you know, you could seek cover there, but make sure that that, Wherever you're seeking, if it's a tunnel, especially a subway, that there's a escape route to get out. And preferably more than one escape route. Because you're just going down there to get out of the initial blast of a nuclear bomb. Also, plan for more than one nuclear blast. Usually, you know, it's not like they might just fire only one nuclear blast. They might put five nuclear bombs on one city. So think of it that way too so don't just think because one bomb blew up that there's not going to be another one so you might want to hold out and then you know and then have your bug out bag so everybody needs to have a bug out bag and you need to have seven, uh, 72 hours to a week worth of supplies in that bug out bag you're going to want to have medical uh first aid kits in that bag tourniquets uh, extra water water purification straws or, or uh, a pump. I like to take the pump because I can do large volumes and fill up containers with it. And it filters the water straight from the source. Um, you know, if you have the ability to, you should always boil your water or chemically treat your water. I like to filter my water and chemically treat it. Or, or if possible, boil it. Um, you know, so you might want to have the ability to boil by having a container to boil. You might want to have... Uh, your lighters, your ferrocerium rod, your metal match, you know, whatever it is that you use to start fires. It's good to know how to start primitive fire, the fire thong, fire piston, uh, fire saw, the, you know, the uh, hand drill, the bow drill, you know, just knowing how to start primitive fire um, with, with those types of methods and trying to perfect them. Um, they're really hard to do if you don't practice with it. So practice with those methods when you don't need it and your life doesn't per, uh, depend on you knowing how to use it. Practice ahead of time. So that way you at least develop your muscle memory. And then know what materials to use when you're starting a primitive fire. You know, what, uh, you know certain, you know, get on the internet. When you're studying and you're learning, research the internet little things like, um, what's the combustion rate of this wood? You know, does this wood burn slow or fast? Is this hardwood or softwood? You know, does this wood have a lot of resin in it or turpin? You know, um, you know, is it because like pine would have a lot of resin and turpin in it? Um, you know, walnut might not. You, you know what I mean? Um, know your you should know at least five major wild 
edible plants. A minimum of five. Study them, know them. Um, you know, I, 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 I always say never trust what you see in a book. Always go out with an expert that knows because they can do Q&A. They can tell you little tips and tricks and stuff like that. Because some plants have a very subtle difference between what's edible and what's poisonous. And they look very similar. And it's just a subtle little difference on that plant that makes one safe to eat and the other one's poisonous to eat. So you need to know what is poisonous too. And you need to know what is safe to eat. And if you don't know, avoid it. Um, you know, uh, you can only carry so much supplies, especially if you're on foot. Even if you're in your car, you can still only carry so much supplies. Plus, if we're under duress as a society or a nation, and we have received a warning that a nuclear bomb is heading our way, and it's imminent. People are going to panic. And you know who else is going to panic? Not just your average everyday people. All right. But criminals. And they're opportunists. So if they see you have a bunch of stuff. And all they got to do is walk up to you and assassinate you. No warning. Just walk up and pow. Assassinate you. And now they own your shit. That's how they think. You know, better you than me is how they think. All right. So you're really going to want to have your security on, you know, you know, everybody in your family, everybody in your group, whatever. Um, you, you're going to want to have your head on a swivel. You're going to watch people's hands. You're going to want just random people coming up at you. You're, you're going to want to protect yourself, especially in that kind of environment. I'm talking the, the most extreme um, worst case scenario environment. And, you know, there's a reason why there's doomsday preppers. There's pandemic preppers. And I'm sure, you know, they're like, see, I told you guys, you know, um, you know, but, you know, just remember this. When the virus was first shown on the news that very first week. All right. Uh, it was showing people in China walking down the street, falling over dead without no notice. Just boom, hit the ground. That's propaganda. All right. And the media ate it up and they spit it out and they regurgitated it and they fed it to the masses to scare everybody. And everybody was watching the news and seeing people walking down the street in China, falling over dead without noticers, walking down the street. Boom, they fall over and they're laying on the ground dead. All right. That was bogus. All right. Because we've never had anybody in America, never anybody in Australia Anybody in Europe walk down the street, fall over dead in the street because of COVID. But the media, when this first came out, that's the manipulation. So if you watch a network that was showing that shit, that should tell you enough that that network was trying to manipulate you and probably has been trying to manipulate you for the last two years, almost uh, three years. All right. For, well, not almost three years, but at least two years, almost yeah, a little over two years. Um, but the point is that if you make allowances and allow that to happen and you keep watching that same news source, then you're part of the problem. You're not part of the solution. You know, you're intentionally gullible and you're not doing anybody any good, especially yourself, especially your family. So, um, you know, if you could show me one case, send it to my email at daniel at com. That's daniel at com. All right. That's S-H-R-I-G-L-E-Y. So D-A-N-I-E-L at D-A-N-I-E-L-S-H-R-I-G-L-E-Y.com. All right. Send it to my email and you show me a video where someone died from COVID-19 while walking down the street in America, London, Australia, France, anywhere other than China, all right? Because that was propaganda, all right? It's, it's, you should be sick of the propaganda. You should be to so sick of it, all right? And most of you probably are, all right? But the problem is, is there's people out there that are so gullible or intentionally gullible, um, 
or they hate politics that are op opposition to what they believe so much that they're willing to play dumb when it comes to anything the other side said. You know, there's no side of politics that is 100% always right. All right. We were supposed to have a balanced political system where it's got checks and balances and the checks and balances come by not having one party rule. All right. Our country will not be better when it's a bunch of Democrats in charge running the House, the Senate and the White House and states and, uh, you know, uh, at the state level legislators. We need to have representation for all the people and it needs to be a nice comfortable mix you know uh what happens when one party gets too much power people get left behind so if you're liberal and republicans are in charge you're going to be a liberal person that feels like you're being left behind your voice no longer has an effect and that's not nice to feel well it's not nice to feel when you're a conservative and we have nothing but democrats in charge and your voice isn't being heard and you feel like it, you're not being taken care of, all right? That's why we have the ability to balance out our political system by putting in represent, representation for all people, all right? But you, if people are bl blindly voting for parties with, and these parties have party lines, all right? And... These party lines, they don't cross. Even the Democrats have infighting. I don't see much infighting on the Republican side that much, but I do see a lot of infighting from the Democrats. So even the Democrats themselves don't get along. They don't see eye to eye. All right. So stop putting your faith in politics. Put your faith in your action. All right. Get out of the politics because, the you know, uh, when a human can lie, they lie. Now, I'm not going to say that all the politicians are bad. I'm not. All right. But I'm going to say enough of them are bad that it makes life miserable for people. OK. Uh, you know, I've just made discussions about the insurrection. I've made discussions about riots and BLM and Antifa. I've made those discussions in the past episodes. Um and I don't want to really regurgitate those same things. All right. I do believe we all should be able to live along together without hate. I do believe we should not have to experience racism. Whether you're a white guy and uh, you're feeling discriminated because some shit that happened 250 years ago, 200 years ago, 175 years ago, or 300 years ago, you weren't even born so why should you be punished for some shit some people you don't even know did all right uh but that doesn't mean uh, that everybody's racist towards whites but there are a lot of people in the left that are racist towards whites uh, I, I i see it um and i see people that not very often but i see the same thing um with people that are racist towards blacks but not in my everyday life. I don't see that out in public when I'm out, you know, physically. I see that um, um, more when uh, it's on the internet, all right? Because people are hiding behind their keyboard and they feel more prone to say what they want to. Um, and there's no one going to hold them accountable for it, you know? Um, people say things that they wouldn't normally say when you're not in their face, because they don't have, uh, you know, the courage to say it to your face. Because they know you might knock them out, you know. So, or 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 whatever, you know. Then there's some people that have no problem saying what they want, and they behind, they'll hide behind their age, they'll hide behind their gender, their identity, they'll hide behind their social group, uh, and think that they can say whatever they want to say. Because um, what are you going to do about it? Because if you do anything about it, then you're a racist or, or whatever. And I think it's just gotten out of pocket. I think it's way out of hand now. Um, but with Russia and Ukraine, Russia wants Ukraine because re Ukraine has uh, natural resources that would enrich Russia. And that's why Russia wants it. Um, 
Ukraine is its own sovereignty. It used to be part of the Soviet Union, but when that fell apart, they separated and became their own sovereignty and they joined NATO and they also became allies of the United States. The problem is, is Joe Biden going to honor that? Is he really going to honor it? Um, is he just, uh, just kind of like saying, yeah, you know, we got your back, you know, we'll help you out. I know, he, I know we sent 200,000 pounds of ammunition for small arms uh over there but that's really not enough how how's small arms ammunition gonna fend off russian tanks or russian aircraft you know and he's talking about sending a few thousand troops over there um well russia has uh uh put over a hundred thousand troops on the border and they're moving heavy uh, uh, equipment and tanks and, and stuff towards the border on trains. And so Russia is getting ready and they're very serious about it. And, um, you know, so the United States may need to start considering how serious their commitment is to helping Ukraine. And we might need to put not just our aircraft carrier over there, but we might need to start putting some armament over there. Um, because I see really in my expectation from everything I've read and from people that have been talking that have family over there in Ukraine, that this is more uh, of a sure thing. This is something that's, you know, not a potential threat. This is most likely going to happen, you know, and that means, you know, we are at risk of having to send our, our, our service members and it's going to be deadly. Russia is not the Taliban. All right. Russia is, uh, a formidable, uh, foe. Russia has, Highly trained soldiers, highly trained uh, pilots, highly trained Navy, and, uh, you know, they're formidable. And, uh, you know, so, you know, it, the, the, the big kids on the block have always been uh, the United States, Russia, China, and uh, the United Kingdom. Uh, they've always been the big kids on the block. And so just the thought of going to war with Russia is almost as bad as if we were going to go to war with China, except for China has a lot more people, um, you know. So I don't know what to tell you, people, but I think the best advice I could give you is start, do start become a doomsday prepper and start watching everything you can, start reading everything you can when it comes to doomsday prepping and survival. And being a survivalist and surviving outdoors, hunting, fishing, doing all that stuff. All right. Because if it ever does get that bad, at least you know how to survive. Off the, you can live off the land. You know, it, it, when you have an inventory, depending on how long you're living off that inventory, as every day goes by, you're using up that inventory. So you're going to need to learn how to... Um, Maintain your fundamentals of survival. Fire, water, shelter, and food. No matter what, that will never change. Fire, water, shelter, and food. All right? Your priorities. All right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can have an inventory, uh, you know, and, and, you know, a good inventory makes life easier on you. All right? But when it comes to food... Eventually, depending on how long you have to live on that food, eventually you will run out. You know, even if you buy a year's supply of food for four people, you know, depends on how long this whole thing lasts. It could blow over quick or it could take like how long were we? How long were we in Iraq? How long were we in Afghanistan? You know, we were at war for like 20 years or over 20 years. Right, uh, or almost twenty years, pretty close. It's around twenty years, okay. 
So if we were at war for 20 years or more, then, and we're potentially might go to war with Russia, do you think that that war won't last a long time? It might last a few years, right? Do I think Russian troops are going to come put their feet on U.S. soil? No, I don't think that that's going to happen. Um, but I do think Russian uh, nuclear bombs, dirty bombs, chemical bombs, radiological you know, threats, biological threats. I, I, I see that coming to our soil. Um, but what if China joins Russia and becomes an ally of Russia? Then we're really screwed because now we have two big brothers on the block supporting you know, against us. All right. So, um, you know, it's not a good it's not a good thing and it's not going to be a good thing. The only good solution is peace. And it doesn't look like we're going to have peace the way things are right now. So the best thing you can do and the smartest thing you can do is prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Um, and that's the best advice I can give you. You know, start learning survival skills. Start learning how to build shelters in different environments and different weather and different temperatures. All right. Start studying. Start watching every Bear Grylls episode on every Bear Grylls survival show. Start watching every uh, dual survival uh, episode in every season. All right. Start watching every survival show that you can stream. All right. Start watching every doomsday prepper show that you can watch and start reading every survival book that you can get your hands on and every doomsday prepper book that you can get your hands on. Start listening to survival podcasts like mine. Start listening to doomsday preppers uh, podcasts and, you know, just start educating yourself. Start doing Internet searches. Start searching how to do stuff. Um how to uh, generate electricity, you know, using a generator and a motor, you know, and, uh, you know, just, you need to start educating yourself, all right? It's, there's so much content out there, you know. Um, it's hard for me to, to think of things to mention because there's so much to mention, you know what I mean? It would be like I'd have to write a script out on what I want to talk about and go step by step like a manual and that would might be kind of boring <laughs> so uh but I, I mean I would be willing to do it just to drive the point home and maybe educate if I saved one life if I saved one life out of the millions on this earth and out of all the listeners that listen to me on my podcast or my radio show whatever you want to call it um if I save one life other than my own and my family and my friends then it was worth my effort sitting here recording these episodes for you. Um, if you if it just saved one life, it would be worth it to me. All the effort. I saved that person's life. It took me 10,000 hours of radio uh, recording and, and all that stuff. But I saved one life. Uh, hopefully I saved hundreds of lives. All right. But the point is, is, you know, it doesn't matter what work you put in to save a life. If you just save one, it's worth it. You know, I've already saved lives with what I teach about survival. And I've had people call in and tell me their story about it. Uh, especially when I was uh, recording, a, a, you know, an interview on someone else's radio show. And I had a caller call in and, you know, say, Dan, you know, because of you, I survived. I was lost in the woods. It was me and my daughter. And I remember hearing some of the things that you teach. And we followed along with that. And I kept telling my daughter, hey, you know, I listen to Dan's uh, radio show all the time. And he told me to do this and I did it. And, you know, and at the end of the day, we got rescued all because we listened to you. And I remembered what you had said uh, on a few things. And I mean, that was just like, wow. You know, that's that's the greatest phone call right there, you know, um, to get uh, especially a, a caller calling in on a radio show. I was, you know, like, um, you know, a great moment in my career. Um, and 
And so I want to have more great moments like that. I want to encourage you to seek out education for survival, doomsday prepping, and, uh, you know, living off the grid, bugging out, uh, hidden gardens, uh, how to properly and what to properly uh, start inventorying and storing, how to grow those gardens. Uh, you know, you can grow a garden at your house, but you need to really consider hidden gardens. And maybe you put your hidden gardens into your bug out location um, so as it doesn't attract attention. You know, that's the main thing. You know, when you're bugging out and you're getting into the wilderness and using that as your cover and concealment, uh, to get away from uh, civil unrest or war or whatever it is, you know, your whole thing is to not have leave a footprint. You know, and if someone comes walking by by chance that they just keep walking because they don't even know that you're there. So you want to leave as, as little a footprint as possible. Um, you know, some criminals, some felons, some escaped convicts, um, some wanted murderers, they'll run out into the woods and stay out there for years hiding out so remember when you go out to the woods you might not be the only person out there and they might not like you being there so you always have to maintain your security and and that means if you're with a group of people you always every night you know just you're not going camping all right this isn't a camping recreational thing this is survival so you need to kind of treat it like a military operation and maintain security and perimeter security every night and do uh rotations all right you do an hour or two i'll do an hour or two and then so and so will do an hour or two and we'll just roll it down to everybody pulls guard duty until the sun comes up and then we'll always keep security so security you know if you're a veteran you know exactly what i'm talking about but if you're not you don't know what i'm talking about all right but and you might need to uh look up on the internet you know a military manual about pulling uh Alpha Alpha security, assembly area security, patrol base security, all right? But start looking up how to do that, and you can do it all for free using the internet. So the information is free to you, and the information is out there. So start looking it up. Start watching videos on YouTube or Vimo or whatever the video account is that you watch, all right? But you really need to take it serious because um, you never know when stuff's going to hit the fan. All right. You never know. And I really encourage you to get close to your creator, your maker. Form that relationship. Confess your sins. Accept your master, your creator, uh, you know, your God. And uh, read your, uh, you know, your book. Read the Bible. Uh, repent your sins. And, um, and that will be good for your heart and soul. All right. A relationship with the creator is going to be wonderful for you, especially if you have periods of isolation. Because with me, I can be alone for a long time and I never feel lonely because I have my creator. I just put my relationship, trust in God and talk to Jesus because I'm a Christian. And I have that ability where I can talk and pray and worship and uh, sometimes when I talk to God, you know, people must look at me like crazy. Well, maybe not now because people have cell phones and stuff. They probably think I'm just talking on a cell phone. But when I talk to God, I talk, I plain talk to God, you know, dear Lord, you know, with respect and dignity and honor and all that. I talk, I talk to God, but I plain talk to God. God, what should I do with this situation? And, you know, God, hey, thank you. I, you know, I give praise and worship and thanks all the time, all the time. Um, but uh, you know, that's another thing that's going to give you strength and it's going to keep you sane, you know, because a lot of people can't handle long periods of uh, isolation or solitude. Well, that will help. That will alleviate it because you won't feel alone. You'll feel like you're with God. God's with you everywhere you go. He's omnipresent. All right. So, you know, and um, if you don't believe in God, you know, you might believe in something. Um, you might believe in positive mental attitude or, you know, or whatever. But um, but you're going to be busy. You shouldn't have many times where you're bored because you're if you are in that situation where you're in a survival situation and you must go seek shelter outdoors, you know, staying in an urban environment when all hell has broken loose um, 
you know, is very dangerous to you, uh, you know, with riots, crime, you know, you know, people when they're in mobs have no problem with kicking down your front door and 500 people come marching in. You might shoot 30 of them, but there's 400 and, uh, you know, 480 of them coming in after that. And eventually they're going to get you and you're going to be done for. So if you have inventory, don't advertise what you have. Don't advertise that, you you know, just do what you got to do. All right. My mind is my inventory. You know, I know that I can go fishing, hunting. I know how to trap. I know how to snare. I know how to hunt. All right. I know how, well, what plants I can eat. And I'm always learning about plants. Never stop looking up plants that are edible. Also, you know, poisonous ones, I'm pretty good. I know what's poisonous, what not to eat. Um, but uh, the edible ones, you know, uh, you know, there's, there's, you know, I believe there's like 1,900 edible plants out there. Um, but there's way more that aren't edible um, and uh, are not edible. And um, and you should know what in your local geographical area is a threat to you in your life. Because a small mouthful of the wrong plant could be certain death within 30 minutes. I mean, so. Um, but you should know a minimum of five edible plants. But I'll tell you what, you're going to get bored with eating the same five plants after a while. And, you know, so I encourage you to learn about as many edible plants that grow naturally in your geographical region or area. And if you're going to go from where you currently live to an egress point, you need to know what's growing in that egress location as well, not just where you live. You want to know what grows in your entire route. What if your car gets taken from you? And you're on foot now, right? And the only thing you have to eat is what's growing from the, the ground. You know, you're going to need to know what you can eat along the way. And as you get higher and higher in elevation, going up into the mountains, or maybe you're going to a hideout in the desert, you need to know what's there to eat along the way there, as well as once you get there. So you have a lot of studying to do, okay? Um, you know... Uh, there's many different geographical environments that we all as people live in. There's swamp, there's rainforest, there's desert, and there's different types of deserts. There's the Arizona desert, and then there's Death Valley desert, all right? Then there's the Sierras, and then there's the Rockies, and then there's the Cascades, all right? Then there's the Ozark Mountains. So you really need to know, you know, maybe you live in Florida, all right? All right. And you have to contend with wildlife there like alligators and and, and uh, you know, pythons and things like that that are there and poisonous snakes and uh, cottonmouth and all that stuff or, uh, you know, the eastern diamondback and or the western rattlesnake or whatever. You know, so you need to know what is a threat to you and be prepared on how you're going to react to it. Um, you know, you definitely don't want to get bit by a snake in that environment because you're going to have a hell of a time getting some anti-venom, especially if all hell breaks loose. And anti-venom is extremely expensive per vial. I mentioned that on a previous radio episode. It was like $15,000 for one vial. And you might need 25 vials of anti-venom to reverse the effects of the snake bite. You can end up paying over 300000 to 375000 dollars just to have one snake bite treated. It's not cheap. All right. Some people are say, well I'm dead because there's no way I can afford to get this anti venom. Alright. So they're not going to give it to you for free. They're going to put it in your medical bill. But you're going to end up owing a three hundred thousand dollar medical bill. It's ridiculous. But Will you even be able to get into an emergency room? Is there going to be an ambulance available to come get you if shit hits the fan? Or stuff hits the fan? Or all hell breaks out? Or the end of the world as we know it, otherwise Totowaki. Alright? So, that's the show for the day. Um, watch Joe Biden over the next uh, 
several days to a couple of weeks when it comes to Russia. Watch everything he says. And uh, I would encourage you to watch all aspects of what he says in the media. So watch the left side, watch the right side, watch the right news reports, watch the left news reports as it pertains to Russia. All right. Watch Fox News, watch CNN, watch MSNBC, watch OAN, watch, uh, uh, um, you know, Newsmax, you know, listen to Associated Press, AP, um, but look at everything, all right? That way you get kind of a more open perspective. Don't just put your faith in CNN if you're liberal. Watch other things too. Don't just put your faith in Fox News if you're conservative. Watch everything. Watch other things too. All right. Think of it like this. I need to know what the enemy is doing so I can gather intelligence. I need to know what the enemy is telling people so I can gather intelligence. You are now your own intelligence analyst. You are your own uh, S2. All right. You're your own security agent. All right. And you, you're, you are your very own intelligence guy. All right. Or girl. Um, and your job is to listen to everything coming in from all directions so that way you can make an educated assessment of what's really the truth, all right? Don't just trust certain news sources because they align with your political party. Listen to the other side too. Not because I'm asking you to do it so you can be open-minded. Do it because you want to know what the enemy's thinking, what the enemy's putting out there. Okay, because there are people that are enemy to our constitution and our way of life, and they would love to take what we have and make it how they want it to be. All right. So not everybody is patriotic. All right. Not everybody really supports the flag. All right. Some people support burning it. Some people won't even stand up for the national anthem with pride. They hate it. It makes them sick, all right? So uh, if you're listening to this radio show, the chances that you're a, a far-leaning left liberal, probably impossible, all right? You probably listened to a couple minutes of it and and uh, filed a complaint, all right? But if you're a conservative, patriot, former military law enforcement, or a first responder, you probably more often than not align with what I'm saying. All right, so, you know, watch out for your militia groups, you know, just don't go joining up something, um, you know, know the history behind that group, make sure that they're law abiding groups, because you don't want to get caught up into something that can drag you down into um, a terrorist, a domestic terror group, and, you know, get your name on the wrong list, you know, um, yeah, you know, um, Get to know your like-minded neighbors, you know, if you can. Social media is a good tool for that. Um, get to know who is around you, the same like mind, and then meet them in person for coffee. Go out there and meet people. Start up a meetup group at meetup.com, uh, you know, uh, and do a meetup. Get to know people. Start your own, like, kind of like neighborhood watch or your shit hits the fan group or your totsawaki the end of the world as we know it group and just get together and casually share ideas strategies and meet in person you know i wouldn't invite the public to your private residence i wouldn't suggest doing that um but i would say meet in public somewhere at a public venue and keep it that way because you still have to maintain your security and anybody you meet from the public can you know, impersonate that they're like-minded to you and and do the same thing as you. But in reality, they could also just be doing it because they want to know who you are, where you're at. Because shit hits the fan, they know who to go rob and steal and who to, uh, uh, you know, where to commit their home invasion robbery. And they're going to bring a bunch of their friends. So I, that's why I say don't bring people to your home. Um, you, you know, unless you really know them well and, and have a history of knowing them. Um, but, you know, you, you know, keep your home as your sanctuary. You can do things outside the house. You don't have to bring it home. You don't need to go show off your gun collection or ammunition or your best knives collection at your house. If you want to do that, 
grab your favorite thing and take it with you. Just properly stow it so you don't get arrested by the cops as you're traveling with it. And if you get pulled over, they look at it like, yeah, at least, yeah, you're you're legally carrying it. It's in a locked container, magazine separate from it, and there's no bullets with it. You know, you got your bullets are in your locked in your glove box, and your weapons locked in a gun case in the back. You know, that's fine. Okay, but uh, you know, so make sure you're 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 traveling with it legally. But you know, take it to you know if you want to meet up with someone, you know and show off at, at an event or whatever then by all means do that um but just be cautious and be smart about how you go about it you know because you know a criminal mind might lure you in hey meet me out here we have a hotel conference room and then you get there and they're like i thought you guys had a hotel a hotel conference room uh they, they said no one reserved it oh well we tried to but we found out there was a 500 hundred dollar deposit coming for it so we have a room over here then you get to the room and then they rob you when you bring all your stuff in then they uh you know come out and rob you and then they disappear and you never really knew who they were so you know you need to think ahead like that okay so you know be be very sure that you just don't meet someone run off and go meet them in person as well you know qualify them you know get to know them meet them outside of that environment you know where you're not bringing everything you have all your valuables and stuff and uh to show off um you know they can meet you at the gun range maybe you can go shoot a couple guns at the range you know where you know you're safe and they know that you got ammo <laughs> and they, you know it's not that they're gonna rob you at the gun range but you know stranger things have happened that's how kyle uh the america sniper was uh killed at the gun range so you know i'm just saying use your head all right um don't be gullible and don't be naive um and i only say this not because i think you people out there are that way but i might have a few listeners that are untrained or you know, not, not everybody has uh, experience with street sense. Some people were brought up very sheltered. And that doesn't mean they're less valuable. Um, it just means that, you know, they're more trusting. Because they haven't been around an element in, the, in society that would make them not trusting. Whereas some of us would have been brought up in the environment where... We've seen what trusting too much can get you. So, respect each other. Um, surround yourself by people. <coughs> Excuse me. Surround yourself by people that know more than you do. Or that you enjoy learning from or talking with. Um, and uh, sharing ideas. You know, you can learn a lot from listening to people that do things differently than you do. Um, you can learn a lot from people that come from a different upbringing than you do. Um, you know, it, there's no reason why you can, if you're, you know, if you're from one part of the country, you should only associate with people from that part. Um, you know, there's a lot of people from the city that... You know, I, I meet people in the city like San Francisco, San Jose, Los Angeles um, that were like former Navy SEALs and Special Forces. And they have a lot of knowledge just because they live in Pleasanton, California or Dublin or Hayward or Oakland doesn't mean that they don't know what they're talking about. All right. Just because they weren't living because, you know, just because they weren't living in Arkansas or Kentucky or Texas. All right. But uh, it would be better for you probably to meet up with politically like minded people. Like I said, I don't think a lot of uh, leftists, progressives, socialists, Democrats would listen to uh, my radio show. Um, there might be a few. If there are, maybe, uh, you know, I could persuade you to open up your eyes and listen to um you know what i'm saying you know and uh you know i i, I appreciate people that have po different political opinions um you know um i might not agree but 
I understand that you you have passion about it, and um, you know, and I have to realize that not everybody is going to agree with everything I say politically, and I'm not going to agree with everything that th they say politically either. Um, and it's funny I have run into a few people that don't align with me politically but they align with me on a lot of things outside of politics like uh, morals, values uh, standards military doctrine you know where we have the same opinions about things because we understand the same military regulations or training you know, and, and things and and then we see people doing outside of that, and you know, so, but they're not a conservative, they're a Democrat. And so uh, I have uh, a new friend, a new, uh, 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 I would call him an acquaintance, a social media acquaintance, or, or a social media friend maybe, um, that I believe he's a Democrat. Um, and he usually doesn't keep conservative friends. He just, you know, it, but me and him have made a friendship, and you know, so I, I try not to talk politics with him too much. Um, but we do talk about the army a lot, and I think he's doing good things uh, for the army community specifically, and uh, I think that's pretty neat. Um, and I support him, and uh, and he comes over and supports my content, and I don't always post survival stuff or military stuff, or political stuff. Uh, sometimes I just promote my family stuff, my family. Like, I went to Carmel uh, this past weekend, and we went to the Monterey Bay Aquarium, uh, took the wife and kid out, and just had a good weekend together. Uh, we stayed at a really nice Airbnb. I was like, checking out hotels, and I was like, I wonder, you know, I never stayed at Airbnb till this weekend. And so I picked a really nice Airbnb. Uh, we all three got to play in the jacuzzi. We had a nice place, and uh, and then we ended up uh, just enjoying uh, the weekend uh, in Carmel, and uh, it was great. And we went to the beach, went to the bluffs, saw some really nice houses, uh, had a really good meal at a local uh, restaurant. And then we even went to uh, the day before that when we went to Monterey to the aquarium. We went and ate at uh, Bubba Gump Shrimp, Shrimp Bubba Gump Shrimp Company's uh, uh, restaurant on the pier at, in Monterey, and it was fun. We just had a great time. I had uh, uh, fish. Oh no, no, we had uh, shrimp and Cajun shrimp and crab, and you know, and some uh, mama. Mama Gump's uh, gumbo. <laughs> so, good time. Anyways, that's it, guys. Uh, let me know what you think. If you have any concerns, suggestions for the show, topics, hit me an email at daniel at danielshrigley.com. And uh, uh, come this Thursday, I'm going to catch back up. I owe you guys an episode uh, for Full Spectrum Survival. I'm going to get down into the specifics of the fundamentals of survival. And then once we cover that, we're going to get into the next phase, uh, travel and map reading, navigation and terrain association, pace count. And then after that, I'm going to get into uh, shelters. Uh, and then we're just going to keep on driving until we're getting into scientific stuff. Um, but it's going to be a long season because it's the full spectrum season. Um, so outside of full spectrum season, I'll still be putting out episodes like I am doing right now. Um, and, uh, you know, just subscribe to the channel, visit danielshrigley.com and, uh, share, uh, this episode as well as the show, the link to the show, um, subscribe to it, follow it. Um, you can listen to this uh, radio show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Music, um, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Podcaster, and, and, and a bunch. There's just a bunch. 
So um, I, I I see a lot of Apple phone users like to use Apple Podcasts. I see a lot of people like to use Google Music, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Um, so, you know, there's probably, I think, 13 uh, streaming platforms um, all together. So pretty much any of your major, the main ones, uh, you can find Survival Talk Radio on it with Dan Shrigley. Uh, I really appreciate your time. Um, like I said, send me an email if you have any show content suggestions. Um, I still have not ventured over to do the blog talk radio although i have an account and could start recording and taking call-ins and stuff like that so if you would like to be a guest on survival talk radio with me um uh, send me an email and if and give me the topic of discussion that you would like to talk about and uh you know what makes you an expert in that um that aspect let me know and maybe we could do a blog talk uh, session where you can call into the show and I can have you on as my guest. All right. And um, bear with me, though, because I haven't used the blog talk um, hosting it. I co-hosted on blog talk radio before, but I haven't hosted it. So, uh, you know, you'll be the first person uh, that I put on that platform. And then I can just share that link over on an RSS feed with this uh, uh, current platform here and. Um, so I have content on Blog Talk Radio from this show because I share it on there with the RSS feed, uh, but I haven't recorded and I'm looking forward to. But when I do it, I want to have a, uh, a guest and then we can have other people calling into the show as well. So that's the plan. And I really say thank you and um, we'll talk to you soon. Don't forget to file your taxes and get that tax return. Are you a fan of survival? Do you like all things survival? Full spectrum survival, urban survival, wilderness survival, how to escape and evade, lost or stranded, doomsday prepper, all things survival. You can find on www.danielshrigley.com. Come visit my official survival website at www.danielshrigley.com and learn how to sustain, survive, and escape and achieve rescue or self-rescue. Metro Security Services. Based out of Pleasanton, California, servicing the Northern California Bay Area. For all your security needs, please call Metro Security Services out of Pleasanton, California. Tell them Dan Shrigley sent you.